on BBC Two, he gets my vote. Putting the world to rights, it's Jack D's election help desk. Welcome to Jack D's Election Help Desk. Now, my four helpers and I are facing questions and easing the worries of our audience as we go into an election more bitterly fought than the Timeric pickles and Ed Balls found only one bit of pizza left at the buffet. <laughs> my panel haven't heard these problems before. Uh, they might be election-based or they might be personal. We cater for swing voters and swingers with the same degree of disgust. <laughs> So, let's meet my helpers. Uh, he's yet another stand-up comedian who's a vegan of Sri Lankan extraction and started out as a maths teacher in Crawley. We've seen it all before. It's <laughs> rubbish man going to And he's Hollywood's go-to Ewok and mine Star Wars actor Warwick Davis. Living proof that girls can be funny and Canadians can be interesting is Catherine Ryan. Yeah. Is there a doctor in the house? Yes, there is. Dr. Phil Hammond is here. Here we are. So, the, uh, the political train has really been picking up steam this week. Labour has been trying to make Ed Miliband more appealing to women, though. To my mind, getting him to do a poll dark would be a mistake. Let's face it, it won't be any easier eating a bacon sandwich topless on a galloping horse. <laughs> David Cameron and Nick Clegg missed the leaders' debate. Apparently, they were arguing over the CD collection and who gets custody of Danny Alexander. <laughs> now, there's every chance we're going to end up with another coalition. Personally, I don't have a problem with power sharing, which is why I always run my outdoor Christmas lights from the neighbour's garage. <laughs> Right, let's get on with some of the issues that have been troubling our studio audience. Uh, uh, so Lewis Clark from Devon. Uh, hello, oh. Lewis. Can... Hi there. Um, what advice would you give to people who've got spouses and partners from non-EU countries who currently can't reside with them in the United Kingdom because of a minimum income threshold of 18,600? So they basically don't earn enough. Right, next time you come on telly with a question, can you research it a bit better than that? <laughs> <laughs> Just wasting our time, frankly. <laughs> Lewis, you're in this position, are you? Have a, uh... Yes, I'm going to get married to somebody from America uh, right. in the not too distant future. Right. So, because of my um, wage of being under the 18,600, it's going to be difficult to get her across. Surely flights aren't that expensive. <laughs> <You> can... <laughs> If, the... I, if she wanted to reside here, so live here. But once you're married, she can, can't no, she? No, no, she can't. That's the point. Why not? Because I don't earn enough. Well, you need to step your game up, mate, don't you? Right. <laughs> I mean, how much do you love this woman? Do you know what I mean? I've never heard of this. It's the law that you can't marry her. Well, I can marry you... her, I just can't live with her in the UK. Why do you need to live with your wife? <laughs> I don't believe that it's true, mate. I think you it just, is. I think you oh, just asked is. this question because you want to show off that you've got a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> That is, that is one of the reasons why, but no, it has been mentioned in these political debates as well. I think Natalie Bennett keeps bringing up as well. As part Between of coughs. Yeah. <laughs> how serious is this relationship? How, how long have you known her for? I've known her for about three years now. Okay. Um, I first met her uh, last year. You first met her last year? <laughs> <laughs> wow. You've been corresponding, have you? But we've been corresponding for a while, yeah. How, how did you meet? Was it an uh, internet it, thing? We met online. Okay. You know, it's, what was the website? I think it was... OK Cupid or one of these. Okay. So okay. I think that's what it's called over here. Over there, it's yeah. called www.howtogettoengland.com. <laughs> 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 Have you actually met her in the flesh? Are you sure she's oh, not just yeah, some met bloke her in on the death flesh. row? Flesh is a big, <laughs> big proposal. Mm -hmm. oh. a big proposal as a well. A big proposal, oh. yeah. How did you propose? About 20,000 people at Detroit Red Rings game. You throw your money around when you want to, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, I can have the money. It's just... Earnings. Yeah, this, this story doesn't quite stack up. <laughs> you actually did a uh, proposal in front of the whole stadium. Yeah, I know. It was pretty nervy. Is it on YouTube? It is. Someone's uploaded it. Ah. <laughs> 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 well, I wonder who that was. 
<laughs> well, listen, congratulations, Lewis, and uh, I think it's a rather nice story. I, I don't know if we've been able to give you any real help. The only other thing I can say is that, you know, there are plenty of other fish in the ocean. And, uh, yeah. Frankly, she sounds a bit high maintenance to me. <laughs> okay, well, thanks for, thanks for sharing that with us anyway. I hope we've been able to help. Thank you. Thank you, Lewis. Well, thank you. That's, uh, that's all we've got time for this week. Uh, I'd like to thank my panel of helpers, Ramesh, Warwick, Catherine and Phil. Uh, well, let me leave you with this. A wise man once said, if you help just one person in your life, then you've got a much better hit rate than Jack D's election help desk. <laughs> Good night. See you next week. And a very wise Jack and some shiny new helpers are back at the same time next week. Well, there's a slightly more serious look at politics with Newsnight here next. <laughs>